Okay, this is ridiculous. Okay, so I know it's ridiculous, except at the very beginning, you're right. It did say it was based on true stories. And I feel like this is one of those things where, like, no one would believe this. But it's, this is actually, like, right. I can picture Steven Spielberg reading this in the newspaper being like, yeah. this needs to be a movie because right. it's so ridiculous. Right. In a world, in a world, in a world where tomorrow's blockbusters reign and yesterday's classics are forgotten, three women intend to remember. Hey everyone, welcome to Millennials of the Movie House, the podcast where three friends watch older movies and review them from our modern everyday perspectives. I'm Betsy. I'm Tracy. And I'm Serena. And today we watched The Sugarland Express, 1974. A uh, story by Steven Spielberg, written by Matthew Robbins, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Goldie Hawn, William Atherton, and Michael Sachs. Uh, quick synopsis, Tracy, go. Okay, Sugarland and- Express. I think one of the things that makes it brilliant, or, or makes some stories brilliant, is it's a simple story. Mm-hmm. It's just very straightforward. Yep. All it is, it's Goldie Hawn. She's an ex-con. She just got out of jail and she tried to get her son back from um, custody and they denied it to her. So she comes up with this grand plan to break her husband out of jail or pre-release jail and they're going to go get their son. That was, that's her, that's her idea. That's all she wants is to go get her son. And it turns into this, they like get pulled over by a cop and they commandeer his um, his cop car and just, you know, basically hold this guy hostage and then lead a trail of cops through this adventure to try to go get their son back. Right. Um, and it's and it was ridiculous, but it was ridiculous because it was also a true story or it was based on a true story. I'm sure they took many liberties. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Good. That's, yeah, that's like, that's a pretty complete story. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about the real story, Serena. (laughs) So pretty closely aligned. Um, In real life, Faye, who is Lou Jean's character, did not break uh, Bobby, who um, I'm like totally throwing out names. Clovis. Clovis. Thank you. Lou Jean did not break Clovis out of prison in real life. Um, it, It was... He had been released two weeks before Mm -hmm. and it was, yeah, it was a slow motion car chase. Um, And then the other thing is spoiler alert, but the, um, in the film Clovis bleeds out over a period of time after he's shot. And in real life, um, the real character Bobby actually died instantly when he was shot. So if he had been released, then why was there a chase? They had been pulled over for some, like, I think they had, um, their their brights on and yeah wow and they didn't wow. they didn't realize it and the guy was like gonna just be like hey you got your brights on and then yeah wow interesting yeah because i think they changed it and changed it in this too they actually were in somebody else's car and they pulled them over i think because they had a tail light out but in the real version it was in their own car and i think they had their brights on okay all right interesting they really, they traveled quite a bit, you guys. In the movie, I think they were going two or three counties over. Which yeah. doesn't sound like a lot, but. And like, and they had like several hundred people, like cops, reporters in real life. Yeah. Following them. Yeah. Um, the event. But it happened over, the, over like a day or a couple of hours compared to over several days in our, our movie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you guys know that it was the first, did you, did we talk about this, that it was the first collaboration between Spielberg and uh, John Williams? Well, I mean, it was the first widely released feature of Spielberg. He had done one feature before it, but it like never got a release and it has like lost to history now. Um, So this is, this is widely regarded as his first film, but yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's also the first him and John Williams collaboration yeah, which is, it's, I think it's notable because of that, but I also think it is the least Spielberg, least John Williams. Yep, yep, exactly. There. Yes, I yes. 100% so agree with you. Not them. But I have to say, and Bets, you probably speak to this more than I do, there were glimpses of Spielberg. Like yes. there were 
some like quintessential, like what we know Spielberg as a director, what he does in this movie. Yes, I have that for a later question, but I'll just talk about it now because um, I was, there were, there were definitely a couple moments. There was one very specific moment where I was like, Jaws, this, this feels Jaws, I got this. Uh, and otherwise it actually had a very 70s vibe, which is not Spielberg. But the thing, I, I started thinking about this, like, okay, what's the common thing? What makes a Spielberg movie a Spielberg? And the thing, that I kind of came to was that he loves to put ordinary people into extraordinary circumstances, which yeah. is a very common thing, but that it's almost to an extreme with him. Because mm-hmm. if you think about his filmography, you've got Jaws, Close Encounters, E.T., Jurassic Park, Hook, Saving Private, everything. It's just, it's an ordinary person put into an extra, extraordinary circumstances, which is why I think he pulled this story out of the news and was like, I love this idea. So yeah. it still has his element there, mm-hmm. but it's just, it felt, it, it, it was just so early in his career. I feel like there are certain things that he now does that yeah. he hadn't established yet. So um, it is very sudden. This is another other um, tangent here. Um, but I remember having this conversation with you, Bets, about Spielberg, specifically about Jurassic Park. And he was always up for using the latest and greatest. Yeah. And I was like, okay, in this movie, yep. he used the latest and greatest. So this was the first time they, they used that type. It. Right. They invented something for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, here we go. Classic Spielberg. They're using this camera in like the, the ch- not the, ch- obviously the chasing, but the between cars and tracking and everything like that. So even though it was new and not necessarily he uses it all the time, but I was like, okay, here's Spielberg using the latest and greatest, the new technology. He likes to play with his toys. Um, and I think why he gets away with it is he does it well. Yes. yes. So there you go. Uh, so I absolutely agree with you. And that scene, that, sh- that scene was one of the best scenes of the movie because you're so aware that th- that's what's happening. You're, you're, you have a camera in the car. It's all one shot. And you're, the, the car outside of the car that we're in, that we're in is like circling. It was it, it, like, I can't even imagine. I can't even fathom trying to attempt that shot. And it was yeah. so well done. Yep. Um, Which shot are you talking about again? Sorry. It was the scene when our guys were talking to the captain for the first time and the captain drives up next to the stolen car and then goes in front of them and goes, then comes around to the other side and it, you're, the camera just follows him the whole way. It was, it's just, it's something that's very commonplace in movies nowadays, but you could tell it was very innovative at the time. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Anyway, how did we like it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> but we do digress. Um, that famous I, last word. I liked it. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. I liked yeah. it a lot. It was enjoyable. It was solid. I think I, I credit that to good acting. Yeah. A decent script. Mm-hmm. Because really, if it, if, if the dialogue and like the chemistry of the characters wasn't there this could have quickly become a really bad movie yes yeah. really bad movie. a really t- bad and tedious movie yes yeah. yes where and but we were you know engaged the whole time we were enjoy you know mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. it it had the potential to be not good mm-hmm. and it you know anyway mm-hmm. yeah all right let's jump into the questions guys Woohoo! top of the marquee what was everyone's favorite part all right i'll sorry I'll <laughs> I, I have some sorry. i can go um, I, Go bets. It, it actually goes back to what we were saying before, which is um, the cinematography. I think um, there were a couple of shots that I was like, "Oh my god, that is just gorgeous," mm-hmm. uh, including the, the including, shots. Sorry, the the shots that were like with dusk behind them. The dusk. You know, I that I almost feel like that's almost a trope. So I didn't really like point think of that one. But the mm-hmm. one that really stuck with me, and I don't know why, is. It was the couple on the side of the road, like when we come back to them. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the people who broke them out of, not broke them out of jail. The yeah. one, yeah, the, the, the couple yeah. who they stole the car from. Yeah. They're just standing yeah. on the side of the road, and it's this huge wide shot of this just plane, and they're just standing there, yeah. backs to each other. It was yeah. just, 
was beautifully shot. I yeah. don't know why. And they were they were kind of off center. Yeah. And they were they were bickering and like yeah. Yeah. It was just yep. it was genius. I loved that yep. moment. Um so yeah, so there were like that those little moments just stuck in there that kind of elevated the movie. I loved mm-hmm. that. Um, I am going to go second because I also agree. My three little moments were um, that film shot in, yep. that I really the, liked. The, I the, have, the car? Yep. Yeah, right. And then the old woman and man at the side of the road. And you liked it more, I think, for the cinematography, but I liked it more for the um, the background acting. Mm-hmm. They were still in this like curmudgeonly old married couple argument that I was yes. just like, of course, yeah. And she's like, I'm not going to sit on the ground. It's dirty. And like, just, just that kind of thing. Yeah. But my favorite, favorite part, again, is background acting. And it's when they yep. abandon their first vehicle. And I don't know if you noticed, but I said, oh, there's already a t- truck driver there. And here comes another truck driver. Yes. And you can see in the background, two men get into a physical fight. And those oh, yeah. are two truck drivers fighting over, I, I mean, I assume all of this, because this is literally all happening in the background. Yes. Nothing to do with the scene. Yes. But they're fighting over who gets to take the car. And then here comes another tow truck who just swoops in while they're fighting to pull the car out. Yes. And yes. it was just, and I, I it must have been the shot too, because this is all literally in the, like the far background because the it dialogue- we almost missed what's it. happening, yeah, the dialogue and everything is very forefront you you're paying attention to them but there are a ton of cars a ton of people all in the background all acting yeah so I I feel like that's the mark of a great director is you have all these other little things happening in the frame that is not the focus but it's still entertaining and you're still getting a story everyone on screen is going to have a story and and convincing us of that is is genius I feel like that's common a lot in theater because mm-hmm. they're aware that everybody is still looking at, you're all still live. Yes. So, and I yep. think people forget that when it's filmed because they're like, oh, I'm off camera. And yeah. So I think, I don't know if, yeah. Anyway. Yep. All right, all Serena, right. your favorite part. All right, I have a few. <laughs> I hope you're both ready. Oh, okay. The first one that came on this scene that literally had me dying, um, the beginning of, not the beginning of the chase, but when uh, Lou Jean ends up in that teal, cla- beautiful classic vehicle, and she's like driving it like a, a beast. That's Serena's dream right there. It's just <laughs> that's, my dr- that. that's my dream come true right there. Listen, she's a blonde driving a teal car at dangerous speeds i can get behind this um and then i had put you know in general i really really loved goldie hans her acting i i don't yeah. this is my first goldie movie that i'm aware of i now, I, I, I mean i'm glad you liked favorites. goldie hahn in this and i feel like i didn't give her enough praise like in my favorite parts because she is she was she was She's good like, yeah. but i also feel like i feel like she wasn't i don't know well it's it's interesting goldie hahn enough <laughs> right, because she got her start, and we know her for comedy. Mm. And I, this was a very this was this was deep. It was sincere. She she wasn't playing a comedic twist on a character. Right, even though her character was uh, over the top. You're right. It wasn't. She wasn't doing it for comedic effect. It right. was. It was. She was. She was sincere. You're right. Yeah. No, sincerity is good. I. I think that maybe that was part of the thing that I liked about it. And th- like I said, I don't have anything else to hold Gol- Goldie, Goldie Hawn up against. Like I don't have other reference points for for film. So, mm-hmm. look up her filmography. I think that there are a lot of movies on her filmography that you would enjoy, Serena. Okay. Yeah. Noted. Um, I have o- Overboard written down, though. Yeah, definitely watch Overboard. That is so up your alley. You're gonna love that movie. Oh, and I will say, like, I don't want I, Goldie Hawn is not forgettable in this. I, I think we were just no. We're si- Our focus was on Spielberg, but really, yeah. Goldie Hawn. She commanded. She had a commanding presence, yeah. and it was. I like that. that until, that's, that's why I like her. Yeah, and the scene where um, she's explaining how her son was taken away it felt so real and i that's a very 70s thing is this very natural 
way of ta- of doing the dialogue. And um, you could tell that a lot of the minor roles were like non-actors or like they, you know, you, like even like the guy in the back of the cop car at the beginning, it, he's just like mumbling along and you, it's, yeah. it's such a unique style, but it works. And especially mm-hmm. Goldie Hawn's That's monologue natural. at the beginning, you just buy into that so quickly and you buy into her character so fully. It yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I do have other favorite scenes. Can I say them? Go for it. Okay. The scene where um, Clovis and Lou Jean are in the car lot or the RV lot and the vigilante slash, um, you know, non-active service guys. I I call them vigilantes because I just thought they were a bunch of crazy people. Like, you know, when they started shooting at them, I don't remember the exact point, but at whatever point they did a bunch of, they were shooting and then they just like cheers with their guns. They cheers (laughs) their rifles. They literally toasted with the rifles. I don't know why. That was like freaking hilarious. I was like, I oh, didn't, I didn't read that as a toast because I didn't think it was purposeful. I thought they were crossing fire <laughs> and their guns whacked into each other. Yeah, because I that's mean, how uncoordinated they were. Right. I mean, it could have, it could have very well been that. But I, I looked been. at it like they were like toasting the guns, and I was like, what <laughs> is happening? And then the other, I forget what happened, but the reporter van got shot at by one of the. Oh my, my gosh. Oh my the god, and the captain went shot the, the tires of the... Oh my yeah, god. and the, the van went into the river. And, like, pe- I think people were, like, on top of the van, like, jumping off. There were off. At, least, I- at least six people, if not more, on top of the van. Yeah. I have to say, they must have... I, I was so impressed was they quite, got that shot. Right. I was like, that yeah, was quite was the stunt that they pulled off, because yeah. it had to have been real. You yeah. know what I mean? Like is yeah. this huge van with six people on top and they crash the van. It, it flipped over and the people on top of the car fell into a pond. Yeah. I mean, there was one guy that like jumped off, like leapt off into the air. I, I was like, what is happening? Yeah. That was, impressive. That was funny though. Yeah. That was very, yeah, that was a very impressive moment. So those were my, those were my faves. I mean, there's definitely others throughout the movie. Um, but those, those were like my big ones. Fair. Those are good ones. Wheel of questions, guys. We landed on Mary, Murder, Make Out. All right. So we're going to take the three leads who are Lou Jean, Clovis, or Slide. Okay. Mary, Murder, Make Out. Who wants to go first? All right. I'll go first. Do it, Trey. Um, okay. I would murder Lou Jean. I love myself a Goldie Hawn. Don't get me wrong. I think she's a little too crazy and a little too off the wall where I don't think I could live with her. I don't think I could handle it. I just, I, I, yeah, I would make out with slide any day, all day. Absolutely. So cute. Absolutely. And actually I think he would be a great husband too, but I think I would marry Clovis and I, it's because of his loyalty. He would do anything I asked for. I mean, be there for me. He would be supportive. He would be there. The I, best, the best part of that, Trey, is, you know, you can go completely crazy, and he's still gonna support you. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. He's there. He's yeah. he's there for the long <laughs> haul. Yeah, I 100% agree. That is my order as well. And to go further with Clo- with Clovis, it, it's he. You could tell that he can be reformed. Like he wanted to stay in jail for the for the right. next four months. He wanted to like be a member of society he wanted a job he was talking about he wanted to like have a future yeah he, he was yeah his character was there yeah what was your order serena now i want to change mine because i 110 percent agree with both you guys i put um kiss lou jean because yep i think she would probably be good that although thinking back she That's, yep yeah she was in the pre-release stall and she was like trying to make you out with oh, yeah. you made a noise serena you were and like, i was what? like what is happening with that and i was like i don't know if i like that or not because he like wasn't kissing her back uh, that was a side thought, note that was a great comedic moment when he pulled down the pants and i was, was just gonna say not only was it was a good comedic moment but i thought it was like a clever camera angle shot mm-hmm. because yeah. it was supposed to be sexy and he was taking her pants off and she had another pair of pants oh yeah <laughs> It was like through her legs or something, wasn't it? It, it was. was like, it I was. forgot it that. Was just, I that. It was just. It was great because 
at that time, I don't know about you guys, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I neither did I. I thought, I thought at first, because I didn't read a description of the movie, that she was like, okay, I can't have my, my child, let's make a new one. I thought that's where that was going. Uh, okay, okay. And it was, you know, it was not his, his clothes, so he could wear clothes is what this was. But anyway, um, that's just that's a reading. A- I digress. But for marriage, I put down slide for marriage. That's that right. was, yeah. That's totally yep. fair. Because, because you could tell he was a good guy, too. Yeah, yeah he was. He a was. good guy. Because yeah. he was sympathetic towards them, towards the end. He was, you know, just doing his job. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. And then Clovis got the, bur- uh, the, the, the boot, the murder. But, um, and also in real life. And in real in, story. In the movie, yeah. All right. Good uh good round of that wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute you're welcome two in a row Woo! thanks how has Woo! this movie influenced or been influenced by other movies okay so i feel like this was peak car chase open road folk hero genre like yep. 60s 70s into the 80s a little bit that this this was that genre yeah I, I feel like this kind of epitomized it in a lot of ways yeah i think i read somewhere that it was like classic trope villain's perspective or you're rooting for the villain type thing right right which like which me it it heavily reminded me of bonnie and clyde obviously yep. um and um smoking the bandit which came actually later um and Badlands. More than anything else, it reminded me of Badlands, which had come out a year before this movie. Um, and it was Terrence Malick and it starred Charlie Sheen and Stacey Spacek. Um, and it, it was just, it was a more dramatic version of this and they're, they're murderers. They're not, you know. The, these guys actually, I feel like um, They're not really that bad. Yeah, Luann and Clovis, I'm mean, sorry, Lou Jean and Clovis, they're they just ended up in a bad situation. Like they weren't bad people. They just ended up in a bad situation. Um, whereas bad, Badlands and Bonnie and Clyde, especially they were like actual murderers, but yeah, exactly what you were saying. It's this villain perspective, folk hero. People were like rooting for them. Yeah. There's just a whole grouping of these movies. I put, it's, a, it's a style. It yeah. Is. I put Bonnie and Clyde as well. And I think it's, it, it's also based on a true story. Like yeah. this is that, you know, and I think, I think it behooved Spielberg to do it when he did it because of what you were saying that that's what was in at the moment. And it was a true story. Like he, it was, it was just perfect timing. Mm-hmm. It was, here we go. Here's this, you know? Yep. I absolutely agree. I had a hard time thinking of examples. Betsy did a good job. Then I got um, Raising Arizona. And that's a, a Cohen brother movie. And it, it was similar because, so Raising Arizona is about an ex-cop who falls in love with an ex-con. And they desperately want, or she desperately wants a baby. And basically makes him go kidnap a baby. Uh, and okay. So it had that, like, this strong couple, she makes him do what she wants, ex-con, baby, it, it just had that feel to it. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, they were Western type, you know. So, uh, oh, uh, the last thing, and I think this was p- very purposeful on uh, Spielberg's part, was the Roadrunner Coyote. They, oh, they yeah. were watching the Roadrunner, oh, yeah. which is, I think that was a, a sweet scene between them because they could see from like the RV they were staying in, like a drive-in movie, they were watching it and they did like the, the sound effects for it and it they were just kind of sweet. it was a sweet moment between them but i think it was very foreshadowing of yeah. what was going to happen where he was she was she was making him be the road runner like go go after this impossible thing and yeah. watch the hijinks that happens after it okay i think that you both already said it but used cars which it's not no, no, it was, we did not, it. good job we didn't talk about no, it yeah but it used cars is 1980 and this movie was 1974, so it's more like maybe this movie inspired used cars. I almost feel like it used cars was a response film to all these 
car chase movies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ladies, please remove your hats and silence your cell phones. How did this movie hold up? Well, it, as always, it's a period of time in the 70s or 60s, whatever. I think it took place in 68. Um, but we, especially Serena, was like, you'd never get away with this. You would never get away with this. Yeah, no. Nope. Smoking. Let's nope. them do this. No seatbelts. No this. No that. Like, to a point where the, the, the guy in the back of the cop car, right? I mean, not that guy, people in the back of a cop car wear seatbelts, but like, he made a point of, oh, we're going a little fast. I'm going to put a seatbelt on because this. And when, when we noticed him putting a seatbelt on, it was just a lap belt. And we're like, yeah, that, would, that wouldn't even help. That wouldn't even do it. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I actually thought that same thing. I didn't say it out loud, but I was like, like, that's going to do anything. No, you definitely <laughs> said that out loud, which is why Did I, I? Like, you're right. Yeah. We yeah, have not no. brought up the best car moment of the entire movie that would never have been allowed nowadays. Oh, oh, absolutely. No. You yep. can say it. No, you can say it because you loved it. So. I did. It was magical because, and we haven't even brought this up yet. So, um, Mashburn, who is our uh, lead guy from Plan Nine, yep. who I think was like, I, I mean, he was gorgeous. I mean, he was that classic Hollywood, like, and he was he was well casted in his his role in this. Yes, um, get a little James Dean going. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So he is sitting on top of a cop car or oh yeah yeah, i think it's a cop car and it comes slowly rolling into scene while he's sitting on it and he like walks up to a conversation by just like stepping Stepping off off. the car he he just like smoothly just it's like it's like stepping off of an escalator or or one of those moving sidewalks or something he just like he steps off it and walks into like a, a conversation um, yeah, it was it very was like badass. Cool. It was it was so badass. I don't know why did we why were we talking about this because loose, that held up. That yeah. held up. No. <laughs> great, <laughs> great, effective. full circle, <laughs> full circle, <laughs> Trey. Those aren't things that those are just things that like if it was made in twenty twenty, that type of stuff would have wouldn't have passed. Right. But like you were saying, Trey, it was a moment in time in the seventies. It it so it weirdly holds up. Yeah. I, th- okay, I'm gonna. This is gonna meld into boom. We fixed it, but it, I think it it held up because he kept it a sad ending. Yes, you know what I mean. Like I think he had he could have with the, like liberties. He could have made it a happy ending, at, or or like have them both be arrested, but then released and then get the kid back or something like that. And I think he he kept it realistic mm-hmm. and made it sad and as much as I want to fix that as my, as my Hollywood ending, I think there's something to be said for not having that. Yeah, that was, that was my boom. And everything you guys said about how the film holds up. My, my thing was this entire thing might've not might've, it definitely would have gone differently if it was made today. The whole thing, granted it's based on a real story. I just, even the real story doesn't, it wouldn't, the real story way. wouldn't have gone the way it went. Right, exactly. Modern and then, society. <laughs> yeah. Going back to what you guys were saying, change, well, okay, so we're kind of going into the boom we fixed it, which is totally fine. But you guys think that a potentially a different ending was for them both to survive and eventually get their kids back, kind of? It's just I, a happy ending. <clears throat> Classic happy ending, you know? I, I feel like that, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say no. <laughs> right. But... I feel like that's the obvious boom I fixed it is to make a happy ending, but I'm going to say no. Like I, like, I, I don't know. I feel like that as a story, that's not, well, cause so what were you going to say? The thing, so if you think about the movies that I reference, especially Bonnie and Clyde and, and Badlands, they, it's, it's not good endings. And it's because at the end of the day, we are following the villains. We're following the antagonists right. and right. It, it, especially that era they're going to remind you that they are the bad guys and they're not right. going to get a happy ending. So I don't think, I don't think, a, I can't think of a scenario where they would have changed it to them having a happy ending. Right. Um, under boom, we fixed it. I actually put, it's based on a true story, so I'm not going to fix it. Yeah. 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 Notes roundup, guys. So, uh, yeah, we had um, said everything that I wanted to say. Um, 
I just want to throw out some more Mashburn love. Um, he he had a minor role to a point where I didn't even like all of the cops were kind of interchangeable to me. I thought the captain and the like the lieutenant or something were like interchangeable because I wasn't I was not paying attention to their faces. Um, They're all white, old white men. Same. But as soon as Same. Betsy, as soon as you said, oh, it's that guy from Plan 9, I was like, wait, what? And then I, I zoned in on him and yeah. <laughs> and all of the parts that I was like, oh, I like this part who I, I was accrediting to a different guy. It was his parts. So I was yeah. like, oh, okay. All right. So he's good. And then I played my, I mean, we, we always play this game where who does this guy look like or whatever. Yeah. So uh, I thought at points Goldie Hawn had a very twiggy vibe. I think it was like just because of the blonde hair and she had these big eyes, just mm -hmm. these. And like, I don't know if I think at the beginning or so, I forget when, but she had them like at, mascara out or something. And it was just, it gave me that, that look it was Twiggy's was the sixties, right? It was. And, and Goldie Hawn was, was known for having her, her eyes, her big eyes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, so slide had, um, I always, I think he looked like Chris O'Dowd. At times, he you had like this, yeah. these eyes, not all the time, but I think his eyes looked the same. And he had that like, he he usually plays these kind of kind, dumb a little bit, yeah. not dumb, but just simple. Oldish. Yeah, yeah, he had that like effect, you know, um, and then Clovis, not not the most attractive man, but he reminded me of um Domo Gleason, I think is how you pronounce his name. Domino He's Gleason, the yeah. Domino Gleason. Yeah. Um, he had just that, you know, look about him. Anyway. William Atherton was interesting because William Atherton, that was his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. William Atherton. Um, because I, I, I know him from a number of 80s movies. So this was the earliest I had ever seen him. So he was young here. I mean, so was mm -hmm. Goldie Hawn. This is the earliest I've yeah. seen her. So. Um, it was interesting to see them both in, in such an early role. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The martini shot guys, would you recommend this movie? Okay. I'm going to say yes with caveats. I think people, I think you're right. That's the, why this movie has gone up because it was Spielberg's first or, you know, first release or whatever. And the first collab between him and John Williams it was a young Goldie Hawn. Um, yep. I think it had a lot of things going for it. The plot was simple, and and I don't get me wrong. I think simple plots sometimes are the best. Um, but I don't I don't know if everyone would like it. Right. I think there's there's I think there's better chase movies. I think there's better true based on a true life movies. I think there are better movies out there. But because of all of the things that I said before. Um, the people who appreciate that kind of thing, I think would get a kick out of this movie. And because they would get a kick out of it, it's also not a bad movie. I enjoyed it. It was good. But I don't think I would just, uh, you know, tell people to go watch it just because. I, it's, it, it's, the th I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm saying yes. And the way I would phrase it would be, yeah, it's worth a watch. You know, it's not, yeah, oh my yeah. God, you have to stop you what you're doing and go watch it right now. Right. It's on TV. Yeah, watch it. It's, yeah. it's yeah. worth a watch. Yep. Serena. Do you recommend I this said, movie? I said yes. I felt as though I felt the acting was strong. You know how sometimes like you just can't deal? Mm -hmm. I could deal with this. Um, the acting was good. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm like slowly learning more and more about what Serena enjoys in movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it's interesting. You like, okay. All right. I'm, it's just it's not so much away. the plot. It's the other things. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you're here, you can find more great episodes over on our website, www.millennialsofthemoviehouse.com or wherever you find your podcasts. <laughs> Curious about updates, extras from our episodes, or want to add your two cents about a review movie? We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle for both is at the movie Millies. Check us out and make sure to follow us. So until next time, we're millennials. And we'll see you at the movie house. <laughs> It's a trap, you dingleberry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? If Serena had written Star Wars, it's a trap, you dingleberry. <laughs>